Well, hello, YouTubers, and welcome back to the Holtz Mitchell Channel and another episode in the logging series. Today, we're going to go ahead through the you know through an exercise of putting the chain back on the bar and what to watch for. Um, we've already taken the chain off to have it resharpened, as you saw in the last video. So I haven't really done anything with the saw, and so I'll bring the camera around and uh, show you some of the you know issues that you're going to fa be faced with. For those of you who haven't gotten any experience with the chainsaw, others out there who are already familiar with it will instantly recognize what I'm talking about. But sometimes I see, you know, guys that aren't real experienced with these kind of issues uh, making the same mistake and then have problems later on. And that has to do with one, proper chain tensioning, and then two, the cleanliness of the of the saw itself because we have tolerances in here that are essentially zero. Uh, when you clamp the bar down, there is a long groove that uh, puts oil into the, you know, brings oil into the chain through a little hole in the bar. And uh, lubricates your chain, and so that way uh, your chain life is extended, your tip, so forth. Um, otherwise, on some of the older saws, you know, like on the old McCullough's, you had a, a hand pump. And so you were, you know, every so often when your chain would start humping up, you'd give it a few pumps and then keep on going until it was humping again. And then, or sometimes in a big cut, you'd have to, you know, uh, give it additional oil. Uh, because the oiler in, in, you know, there's, you know, in the older saws, there wasn't an oiler. You actually had to manually pump. And then as time progressed, they came up with the idea, well, let's put an oiler on these things to um, you know, continually lube the chain. And so as, of course, the saws improved over the years, uh, that no longer became an issue. But when you have, say, like this and a longer bar, uh, you're going to have to you, you turn up the oiler on the, on the saw in order to maintain proper lubrication. And so you know, that's going to be an issue. And then again, uh, cleanliness because if you have crud in between the bar and the power head <clears throat> that oil can is the oil is going to find a you know find a way out and it won't always find its way to the chain and so you might have oil dripping out somewhere you know going where it's not supposed to go and so you got to rectify that uh, by cleaning out you know keeping everything keeping those mating surfaces uh, absolutely clean so uh, the only tool you're going to need to uh, to uh, put your chain back on is your bar wrench. Um, ironically, you know this is the uh, Husqvarna 320 or 371, and um, I've had I've carried this uh, this uh, model of saw for a long, long time ever since they came out. Um, and it was interesting when I first got it because the bar wrench that was supplied with it didn't really work all that well, uh, f at least for changing the plug. Uh, still is the only manufacturer that supplies the, cor <laughs> the correct size of bar wrench, or I should say the socket end of it, that actually works with the, with the Husky 371 and 372, and then still has the 13 millimeter uh, hex head on the, other, on the other end of it. 19 millimeter here, 13 over here. So <clears throat> anyway, if you can find yourself one of these, uh, this is the bar wrench to have for the Husky 371, 372, also the Steel 66 or 066 or 660, 440. You know, they've, they keep changing the numbers. Um, essentially the same saw, just some, you know, modest improvements here and there, but you know, the, the numbers say it all. You know, I'm used to calling the Steel 44 or 44 which is now the MS440. Uh, you know, anyway, I'm ranting. But anyway, let's get on with the uh, uh, putting the chain back on the bar. Um, I'll bring it around here and show you, you know, how cruddy these things get just from a few cuts and then uh, how to mitigate for it, what to do, and how to put it all back together. So here we have our power head, and as you can see, there's all kinds of schmoo in here. Um, here's the sprocket cover as it's called. Here's the chain tensioner and here's the nuts and it's all you know full of, of, of schmoo so to speak and uh, 
What this is is just oil, the chain oil. Uh, it's pretty sticky. Um, it has to stick or be sticky in order to uh, maintain lubrication on the chain. So that's the reason it sticks and of course it mixes with the chips that are generated during the cut and then they accumulate inside this cover. Once in a while you'll have to pull the clutch off. This is an inboard clutch and they, they're hold, held on here with a little e-clip. And so you pop that off and then you blow that off out from time to time, about every six months or so if you're using your, using your saw a lot. Other than that, once a year is fine um, for most of you that are just using it on occasion. So as we take the bar off here, and I'll, I'll show you some stills of this, you'll see in the schmoo here uh, some accumulations. Now I keep my mating surfaces fairly clean so there really isn't a whole lot of accumulation underneath on here on the face of this. Now, <clears throat> now if you put this thing back together and there's any kind of you know little bit of wood chips or what have you this will uh, this will hold off you know pull your bar away from this this mating surface and here's your slit in here uh, that supplies the oil to the bar via this hole up here at the top Again, I'll put some stills in here, like, like right here. So now you've seen, you know, the hole in the bar and the slit here. So that gives you an idea, uh, you know, where the, the oil has to come in. And so you want to keep all this, this as clean as you can. Um, I'm going to blow this out with compressed air here in a minute and then scrape off the mating surfaces with uh, a fairly sharp tool and then uh, the, uh, the groove on the bar you want to scrape that out too or in my case I'm just going to use uh, compressed air. Uh, I've got it handy in the shop right here so uh, if it's still on or I don't know if the compressors are still running if not I'll just use a you know a sharp tool. Normally you know if you're logging you'll have your um, the horseshoe nail on the end of your tape, you can usually run in here and just pull all that, that schmoo out of there and you're good to go. Um, can you run the bar uh, with all that gunk in there? Yes, you can, but you want to make sure that at least around here where the oil pickup hole is, that this portion of the thing is fairly clean so that way the oil can get in there and lubricate the chain. At some point the, the groove is going to fill up with, with gunk anyway so it really doesn't really matter all that much. Now I've been asked on occasion you know the, the little hole up here at the tip of the bar I'll show you still right here. Now this is a lubrication port uh, and you have it on both sides of the bar and some guys like to use grease in there. Uh, personally I don't for the simple fact that uh, your oiler should be supplying enough lubrication to keep this lubricated. There's a set of roller bearings in here that go around. Uh, this is all riveted together and so you're going to have, uh, you're gonna need, this has got to be lubricated but the problem is with the grease it displaces the oil and so by the time the grease is out of there um, the oil can't really penetrate because it's you know it's just kind of one of those things where the oil and the grease don't mix well so if you're going to lube this at all I would suggest that you go ahead and use the chain oil that you're using to lube this with uh, you, you really don't need to um, but if you're going to do it use the oil or use a very light, a light grease that uh, will mix well with your bar oil. Um, the bar oil, like I say, is, is very sticky and so it doesn't mix well with other oils. Now, another question I've also had also often come up is uh, for in the winter time, mixing in old motor oil. Um, can you do that? Short answer is yes. Do I recommend it? Absolutely not. And for the following reason. 
Um, as your saw warms up, your muffler is close to your oil tank anyway. So the only reason you really need to mix the motor oil with your bar oil is when you're pouring it out of the jug so it pours a little easier. Other than that, once the saw is warmed up after that first half tank of gas, um, oil flow isn't going to be much of a problem, even at 40 below. I mean, I've had that happen to me. Um, the other thing is that some guys will say, well, uh, the oil is too stiff at you know that initial startup um, and it'll, it, it ruins the pump. Well, no, it doesn't. Uh, it just it's a little stiff yes but if you really want to you know uh, supplement the oil or make your chain go run a little easier in cold weather just run a dab of oil on it and then you're good to go until your saw is warmed up and then that way you don't have any trouble so anyway let me go clean this bar up and this uh, thing up with uh, compressed air if we still have any on and I'll bring you guys back and show you the, some of the tricks and how to uh, Put your chain on. Well, it looks like the compressors are all shut, shut off, so I don't have the uh, compressed air to blow all the stuff out with. Uh, so I'll have to end up cleaning the groove out with a tool. But we got a little bit of schmoo accumulation here, stuff that's, you know, chips that have been uh, smashed in between the, the mating surface. So we're going to get that off. Now, this was on the outside, so it wasn't all that big a deal. But these bars are ambidextrous, which means you can turn them around and use them any which way, you know, if you get. Uh, you know, one side of the rails gets cut and crooked, you can flip the bar over and, uh, you know, continue on cutting. If the other side cuts straighter, then, you know, that's, that's what you can do there. And so, you don't want to use anything really, really sharp. You know, a good, uh, um, a good spatula is good enough to, you know, get the schmoo off. Now, you will notice, notice some raised burrs like in this photo right here. where the chain runs up here onto the bar and then you know you get burrs that form along uh, the edge of the bar as well. Can you file it off? Yep, you can. You can use a file, however your file will dull rather quickly because these bars now this particular bar uh, brand is Carlton, um, they make a quality product um, and so the bar is hardened which means your file life is not going to be the greatest when you start filing on the edges of the bar with uh, a common, you know, a milled file or a bastard file. You don't want to use too coarse of a file because then you get, you know, nicks in the bar um, and you don't want to take off too much, just enough to kind of break that you know get that burr off there and, and break that edge just ever so slightly because that burr is going to hang up in your cut and so you want to get that off of there i'm not going to do it today i'm just going to throw this thing together uh this burr really isn't all that bad just yet um for what i'm going to be doing with this saw it's going to be plenty good enough but as a rule if you get that bar if you get that burr forming by all means take it off <clears throat> so one of the tools you can use if you have your leatherman um i'm going to use the uh <clears throat> the saw portion of it here, but I'm not going to run it teeth first because I don't want to gouge the bar. I'm just going to run the the back end of it through, pull what little bit of goop is in here out of the bar. Usually the bottom side is where you're going to get the most accumulation, although if you do a lot of top cutting, uh, you might see some at the top. So there really wasn't all that much in there, but now the groove has been all cleaned out. Now, keep in mind there's a million ways you can throw your chain on. Um, the most important thing is, is that you get the direction correct. Um, I've never put on my chain backwards yet, although I've, I've come real close, but never quite done it. Um, with these inboard clutches, you can throw the chain on onto the bar uh, by putting on the tip first, stretch it out. Then you can set it on your, your clutch here. I'll bring the camera around here and show you guys again up close and then uh, you just put the chain in the groove and Bob's your uncle so then you can put on your your sprocket cover and uh, 
then throw on the nuts. Like I said, I'm going to bring the uh, bring the camera around here and show you guys again up close and in personal how this this can work for you. Um, so let me do that real quick. So here's an instant replay on the, uh, the previous scene. So we're going to put our chain on. Like I say, make sure that uh, you get the direction to cut right. So when you're looking down on the chain, you want the teeth, the points of the teeth pointing away from the power head. If the chains, if you're looking at it from on the bottom, then you want the teeth pointing towards the power head. And that's if the chain is on the bottom. So then you just slip it onto your sprocket right here. Let's see, let me bring, tilt this up a little bit so you can see. So then you just stick it on the sprocket, swing it around, start uh, pull a little tension on there and then just start laying your chain in the groove. Sometimes it'll fall out, it's just kind of a kind of a picky little thing, but with a little practice uh, you'll get it. And so then you just put that in there. Voila, chain's on there. Slap your sprocket cover on. Then uh, thread your nuts on. Yes, this uh, sprocket cover, let me uh, take this off here real quick. Okay, the, uh, the chain tensioner is in the, uh, in the sprocket cover right here. Here's the, the pin that actually moves the bar back and forth. And then on the front of the, of the thing is where you take your screwdriver portion of it and then you can tension your chain. This thing is all wore out. Um, yes, there's uh, this, the rubber guard back here. The chain guard is missing. Then this, uh, the, the, uh, the plate is missing for here. The chain guide is missing. Uh, there's a plastic chain guide that goes in there. This is an old saw. It's just one of those things, you know, picked it up for a fairly decent price. And so it'll do the job for what I need to do with it anymore. So that's the reason I got it. It still runs, so it's a good saw. So anyway, we throw on our, our bar nuts here and we cinch them down as best you can, hand tight. And so we're going to take our, our bow winch and what we're going to do is go ahead and turn, tighten them up wrist tight and then back them off a half a turn or a quarter of a turn, just enough to where you can tension this, the chain. So now we've got our chain on the bar and now we're going to check for tension. The tension on this is actually pretty good, um, but for demonstration purposes I'm going to go ahead and act as if this thing was too loose or too tight. In this case, this is this is about where you want it. Um, you you want to be able to lift up on the chain and um, be able to pull it with two fingers. If you can't pull it with two fingers, your chain is definitely too tight. Or there may be some other cause uh, where you have the chain pinched inside the power head between the uh, between the bar and the. Uh, and the power head or the bar and the sprocket cover. It's happened to me before, so don't feel bad if, you know, for some dumb reason, you know, you pinch your chain. It happens to the best of us, so don't worry about it. Just deal with it as it, as it happens. But like I said, you should be able to, to pull your chain with two fingers. Now, if your chain is looking like this, now the reason this is, uh, I'm putting this cardboard in there, uh, you'll see here in a minute. Now, as the you know, I just loosened the bar up and it dropped down. So now the chain is really, really tight. That's too tight. Now, if the chain is too tight, you're going to have uh, a few issues here. Usually up here on the tip of your bar, where this sprocket up here runs too hot, you'll see it smoking. Uh, that means the oil is still lubricating but there's so much heat being generated that it's burning up the tip and so you don't want to over tighten the, the chain some guys you know some guys come out with the excuse well it'll keep them you know if, if i'm lemon it'll keep the chain from flipping off no it won't 
If that chain's going to come off, it's going to come off, and it doesn't matter how tight you run it. Um, if you run it too tight, you're going to be doing damage to your tip, and you're also going to be doing damage to your crank bearings, um, your sprockets. You're going to be taxing the motor way too hard. You won't have any power to speak of. You might even be stalling the, you know, the chain and burning up your clutch. So don't uh, run your chain too tight. So I'm going to back this off here just a smidge and demonstrate to you. Now we've got your chain too loose. Now if you run your chain like this, I've seen guys do it. I've done it too, you know, just for short periods of time where, you know, you just don't have the time to stop. What you're going to end up experiencing is a lot of wear just right along here at the very edge of the bar because the chain is is coming around and it's it's making a bigger arc and then it's slamming back into the bar down here and it's gonna, it's going to be hammering away and causing wear in this section of the bar. So you don't want to run it too loose either. So the best way to get rid of, you know, get rid of that slop is to actually lift the, you know, the, the rear handle of the saw and, you know, rest it on a, on a surface that uh, is safe, that's not going to dull your chain. And so now with the bar nuts just barely, barely tightened up, you don't want to, you don't want to run them too loose because then you're going to run the, you know, the, the risk of, of tightening up your chain too much. And so you want them just barely touching. And so then you run your chain in until you watch it uh, come right up to the bar. And that's where you stop. And then you should be able to, to, to snap a little bit of chain there. And uh, I'll bring in, a I'll make a close up of this here as well. So there you go. Bob's your uncle. You can still pull and the chain runs nice and easy. So let me uh, bring in a, make you a close up of this and uh, show you up close how this is going to look. So as I said before, lift your saw up and so that way you have all that bridged weight leaning down. It lifts your bar up in the, in the power head and puts the chain where it's going to be. And as you can see, the chain is hanging nice through. Um, so now we're just going to tighten her up. Now see if you back it off then you have to pull the chain again in order to get it dropped down and you just want it coming up until it barely touches. And once she touches down here along this bottom edge you're good to go. Just tighten up your bar nuts and oingo boingo, Bob's your uncle. Well YouTubers, that's a wrap for this episode of the logging series on how to throw your chain on and tighten it. Um, if there's something in there that you have a question about, by all means put it in the comment section below. There's probably something I overlooked, much to your chagrin. So if I did, by all means I do apologize. And um, for those of you who have legitimate questions, by all means throw them in the comment section below. Other than that, you know, a little bit of traffic, whatever's on your mind, thoughts, critiques, suggestions, ideas, put them in the comment section as well or if you just want to say hi and you know or whatever um, if there's something that I'm missing in this uh, by all means let me know and then that way we can supplement the monologue here in the uh, comment section so folks that are actually you know trying to get something out of this can follow along and then actually get some goodie out of it so hopefully um, it kind of helps you guys a little bit now uh, the one thing I, I didn't mention um, the shorter bars, it's the same situation where, um, you know, you want to, uh, you know, the, the, the principle applies to all lengths of bars. So it doesn't matter if you're running this, like this 30-inch uh, bar right here, or if you're running a, you know, a, a four-foot bar, a 42-incher, or just, a, you know, a 16-inch bar, you know, the principle's all the same. Um, like I said before, uh, if you run your saw too tight, you're taxing the saw, you're taxing the machine, um, you're putting too much strain on the tips, you're putting too much strain on the, on the crank bearings, you're putting too much strain on the sprocket, the clutch, the whole bit. So, uh, you know, the right amount of tension is crucial. If they're too sloppy, then you get a lot of excess wear up here at the tip of your saw. So, and again, lubrication, 
Not really necessary because the, the uh, oiler of the saw should supply enough oil to the tip to where you don't need to lubricate this. And if you do lubricate it, uh, use the oil that you're using in the tank or you know to, to lubricate your saw with. Because the grease and the and the uh, the oil don't mix well, and so it takes a long time for that dis grease to disperse. And by that time, usually the tips are running so hot that uh, you can't even touch them. And that means, again, you're, you're creating some damage there where you don't really want to. So my recommendation is don't uh, grease these, oil them if you have to. So in the next episode of this uh, logging series, we're going to be taking a closer look at the rakers. Of course, the types of chain, this is one of those, as I pointed out in the sharpening video, um, this is one of those anti-kickback chains. I really don't like these things um, because they don't really do what the manufacturers claim they do in preventing kickback. Um, there's other ways you can prevent kickback, and that's in the way you file your rakers. And we'll be going over that in the next episode and using the proper uh, raker gauge for that. Those little gizmos that you get with the saw that bridge over the, the length of the teeth. There's a problem with those because your bar isn't straight, it's got an arch to it. And so those tools are those tools are straight edge and so you don't get the proper um, depth between the rakers. The, each raker has to be uh, commensurate with the tooth because the tooth is also tapered to the back and so as the tooth life shortens uh, that that pitch changes ever so slightly and if you have one of those goofy bridge ga you know uh, bridge guides um, you're not going to get a good cut so anyway with uh, with the next episode we'll be covering that so with that, YouTubers, that's a wrap for this uh, episode. Hope you were able to glean a little use, useful information out of it. Um, if you have any thoughts, comments, critiques, or questions, by all means, put them in the comments section below. I realize the monologue may or may not be incomplete. And if there's something I didn't cover, by all means, ask a question and, uh, you know, down below. I'll be happy to answer anything that you guys, uh, you know, any question that you might have of me. Mm -hmm.